episode of Vibes. Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast presented by NBA 2K23. Another night of action around the NBA. BJ Armstrong, where we see here for you once again. BJ, wild night. A wild night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not a great night for uh, your Detroit Pistons. No. You took a heavy loss to the Washington Wizards, but i got to say this. The Wizards are looking kind of nice. You know, some, I've seen some people's predictions. There'd be a lottery team or whatever it is, but they're looking kind of nice to get the season started. Kuzma, Beal, Porzingis, even Hachimura getting some buckets off the bench. I mean, fair play to him. What do you see in that game that stood out to you? Well, you know what? When you start winning games that you're supposed to win, that's always the first sign or good sign of a winning team. You know, this team has been snake bitten by the injury, you know, the injury bug. You know, Porzingis, Bradley Beal, Kuzma, you know, Rui missed a ton of games last year. But when they are healthy, you know, they're pretty good. Porzingis is out there doing his thing, you know, will the thrill. One of my favorite players is coming yes, in all sir. of a sudden now. You know, he's doing his thing. And right now they're they're playing well, you know, give Bradley Bill and those guys credit. So if they can stay healthy, you know, they're very capable. Kyle Kuzma has had a really nice start to the beginning of the season. You know, and I, I I like their I like their talent, but you know it's early. Give them credit, but if they let's see how many games they can play together mm-hmm. and be very consistent. And if they can do that, I, you know this team is probably somewhere five, six, seven. I could see them in the play-in game because they have talent and they, and they have a they have a bona fide player in Bradley Beal. Well, I was actually thinking about the Wizards yesterday during the daytime because I was looking at some of the records of some of the teams and it reminded me that last season the Wizards actually began five and one to start the year mm-hmm. and then obviously things didn't work out so well for them things went a little a little pear-shaped shall we say so it's going to be interesting to see how if they can sustain this if they can't sustain this but also a reminder that right. how teams start the season isn't always how teams end the season i mean i've had people saying philly like philly like philly this year maybe maybe (laughs) maybe (laughs) or maybe that's just how things are going to continue for them who knows you know i mean only time's gonna tell the game of the night last night for me was dallas versus new orleans but here's the thing new orleans was missing three of their stars no zion williamson no Brandon Ingram. And who was the other star that was missing? It was... Um, I can't remember. Uh, it was Herb Jones. So they're missing three stars. Everyone's expecting Dallas to destroy them. They come out with a win. A crunch time win. I was... I, w- I want to say I was surprised, but I wasn't too surprised because when you've got a team as deep as New Orleans, everyone's going to take every opportunity possible to try and get more minutes to try and establish their place on the squad. But that was a real interesting game for me because the Pelicans had eight players scoring in double digits. The Mavericks basically have three guys who scored. Luke had 37, Dimity had 24, and Christian Wood had 23. No one else touched double digits. So it just showed you the difference in the balance between having a full squad, even when guys are out with injuries, that's capable of putting up double digits and relying on just three players to basically carry you. Um, The game ended with Luka Doncic missing a three-pointer. That would have won the game for Dallas. But this New Orleans Pelican squad, I think it's for real. You know, uh, Trey Murphy, I don't think he missed the shot last night. Four from four from downtown, eight from eight overall from the field. Um, Alvarado stepped into the starting lineup. Valentunas and McCollum were still there doing their thing. Devontae Graham was making some shots off the bench. Larry Nance really showed off his skills as a versatile defender as well. How far do you think this Pelicans team can go? 
Well, you, you know, these are always what I call trophy wins. And they win these games and people will immediately say, oh, they're missing players. Wow, they could be really good. You know, they're going to go. They're going to go as far as Zion and Brandon Ingram can take them. That's how far they're going to go. Now, let's let's hope that you know that those guys can play, and they don't miss too many games. Especially Zion, he needs reps. He needs games. Very unfortunate situation, and that was that was a bad fall. Hopefully, he's back in the lineup. Brandon Ingram, you know, he's out for protocol here, a concussion protocol. And let's get him back out on the floor. And, and of course, you know, Herb Jones, you know, we, you know, we, we, you know, we, we love him as a young player and what he does, especially on the defensive end. But more importantly, they need their stars to play. And nice win for them. Bad loss for Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a bad loss. No, no, there's no way around it. You know, you look at the stats. You you, you you know, you got to, you hear me, you, you know, we hear me say this, and I want to say it early in the season. There has to be a blended style of play. You can't just depend on Luca to handle the ball, distribute the ball, and play the way he's playing. You know, I think Luca has to take it upon himself to figure out how to be an inclusive player and to include his teammates because he has really good players beside him but he has yet to learn how to play within the framework of a team yet. And he's a star. He's a magnificent one-on-one -on -one player, but these are the type of wins or these are the type of games that Luca is going to have to figure out how to play and be an, be an inclusive player, get everyone to touch the ball. And then he's got to finish the game. I think that's the next step in his progression. He puts up these big numbers, 37, whatever. 11 rebounds on like seven assists. Yeah, but he, he that, that's too much. That, that's just too much. And you can't, you can't lose to a team that they're not missing one of their primary stars. They're missing their two best players. You just can't do that and then consider yourself a good team. That's just unacceptable. Bad loss for the Dallas Mavericks. We expect more from them. And, you know, I'm sure they'll get it figured out. But, you know, this is just a bad loss. And you have those type of losses throughout the course of a year. Well, speaking of teams missing their two best players, the Oklahoma City Thunder took on an L.A. Clippers team. And the L.A. Clippers were missing their two best players in Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Um, meanwhile, the OKC Thunder, in their own right, were missing Josh Giddy and Chet Holmgren with injuries. And it was OKC who came out with the win. Uh, they had a they had a good game. Shai Gutis Alexander looked absolutely fantastic out there, dropping 33 points and eight assists. Um, I'm, I've been really impressed with what I've seen from him. I want to see him in a winning situation sometime soon. I don't know how many more seasons I can put up seeing him in a losing situation. Trey Mann had a nice little 25 for himself. Well, get used to it, Mo. Get used to it because it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to happen. Oh, it's going to be a long season in Oklahoma. It's going to be a long season in Oklahoma. This might be one of the few wins they get this season, but very disappointing for the Clippers. Zubak, the only star to score in double digits. John Wall had 12 off the bench. Covington had 10. Kennard had 15. But, you know, when you've just watched the Pelicans without three of their stars beat the Dallas Mavericks, you would expect the Clippers, even without their two best players, to beat a Thunder team who are missing two of their three best players as well. Is this just a bad one-off game or is it a sign of things to come? Because we well, know I, I, the load management is going to have to be there all season long for Kawhi, especially. Well, what I think is, I, I think the, the Clippers were looking too far ahead. I, I, I think they are strategically trying to load manage and saying these are the games we should win with or without our best players. However, out of respect to everyone, and I, you know, I, this may be an old school way of thinking, but I think it's the correct way of thinking. You have to respect your opponent, no matter every, no matter who you plan against, because you never know what can happen during the course of a season. All of these games matter, and you know they put out a statement today. Kawhi Leonard wanted to play, but we are going to be ultra conservative and not allow him to play. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, he's missed so many games now that you're, you at, at, now you're just like, this is just getting to be, how are you going to get rhythm? How are you going to get a, a cohesive group if you don't get out there and play? I don't care who you're playing against. Players need to play. And I know this This is a new era, load management, all of these things, but you got to play. I mean, I, I don't know how else you're going to, you know, you can go to practice, but you can't play. Well, sit him out and practice then. Mm-hmm. Sit him out and practice. Okay, if you know he's going to, if you know you're going to load manage him, all right, shorten his practice. Get game reps. And, you know, so I, I, I'm just disappointed when you see this. He probably won't play in the next game because they're playing these back-to-back games now with teams to cut down travel, whatever they're doing now with mm-hmm. the scheduling. So, you know what? It's only right. You know, the, the, the basketball gods, it's only right that the Oklahoma City Thunder should win this game. Because, yeah. you know what? You got to respect the game. You have to respect the game. So, you know, when you look at it at the roster, you look at it and you're trying to, cheat the system, if you will, by load managing players because you're saying Oklahoma is bad or whatever the case may be. Well, yeah, they may be bad, but this is the NBA. And Mm -hmm. you you have to respect everyone, you know, and uh, but another bad loss for a team that we think should be or could be one of the top teams in the league. And um, you just can't go there and lose against Oklahoma City. You have to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. They have to beat Oklahoma City because all of these games, they matter. They matter in the end. They matter for home court. They matter when you need, you know, these games, when everyone starts tallying up their wins and losses. You know, these these are the games that come back to bite you. And um, this, uh, this, is a, this is an awful loss for them. Well, I'm happy for the fans in OKC because as much as I want to see them in a winning situation, being a season ticket holder in Oklahoma, seeing these wins in person must be far and few between. So shout out to the fans in OKC. If you're still well, the season OKC's ticket for had a, a good run. Who's... They've had a good run. Okay, they've had they they've had a good run. So you know, they, uh, I mean, they, they've had an okay run. Yeah, they, they've, they've had, had an okay run. run. I mean, they had one finals appearance in since they basically went to Oklahoma. They've had three is, MVPs. They've had a good run. Uh, they, they've had a they've had a good. But run. I mean, shout out to the fans who are still showing up. Season tickets for this team. Shout out to them. But the final game of the night, the Phoenix Suns and the Golden State Warriors. It was a big game. You know, got a little heated. We're gonna get into that in a second. It got yeah. a little bit heated. A big win, one three four to one oh five for the Phoenix Suns, led by Devin Booker who had 34 points. Devin Booker also getting into Clay Thompson just a little bit. Just a little bit. Clay's first career ejection, um, he struggled. He was 0 for 4, 0 from 3 from behind the arc when guarded by Booker before his first ever career ejection. That's a pretty impressive stat. Clay's won four championship rings, which he was reminding Devin Booker of, without getting ejected, and tonight was his first time. BJ, what do you think of that? Because after the game, you know, in the interviews, Booker was showing his respect, saying that he's got a lot of respect for Clay. It's a little bit of trash talking. I don't know if it necessarily needed an ejection. Our favorite referee, Ed Malloy, and his crew managed to put up 17 personal fouls and six technical fouls in that third quarter alone, which is what no one wants to see. But what did you think of that little incident between those two guys? I didn't even see the incident. I, I was watching the game. Exactly. I, I don't have to, you know, I don't have time for that, that, that type of stuff. That, that, that's part of the game. You know what? Uh, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about Phoenix. Okay. Phoenix. I have to give them an apology. I saw them in the preseason and I was ready to say, maybe the window has closed on this team. Mm-hmm. That the way they exited last year in the playoffs was just disappointing. You know, you're like, oh, okay. They had their chance and they blew it. They didn't, they didn't finish it. They lose game seven. I mean, it was just a horrific game for the team. However, you know what? Let's go back to the preseason. They had probably one of the worst 
losses I've seen in the preseason when they lost to an Australian team that came over here, yep. and beat them in the rear. Remember, everyone's yep. talking about. And here's a funny thing: I ran into Phoenix. I was when I went to go see Victor play in Vegas. Oh yeah, Phoenix was staying at my hotel. Okay, or I was staying at their hotel. I should say. Okay, you know, I'm I'm no one. I was no, it's BJ's hotel. hotel. This is BJ Sound. And I just ran into the coaching staff in the lobby and we were talking and they were concerned about the team. I, you know, it wasn't just me, you know, it doesn't matter who it was. I was ran into the few of the coaches down there and they were like, man, that was a, it's a tough loss. I know it's just the preseason, but well, they lose to an Australian team, mm-hmm. you know, and those guys are pros over there. Don't get me wrong, but it's the NBA. Mm-hmm. And to watch how they've responded, they've been very, I mean, I, I got to call it, like I see it, they've been very impressive. They've been very competitive. They've played with a little, they, they got like a little chip on their shoulder, you know, and they get in, gets, excuse me, they get a little chippy tonight with Devin Booker. DeAndre Ayton is playing with some fire. Mm-hmm. And you got to give those guys credit. I mean, who's this kid that's scoring at the center position? I mean, well, th- this is what I was going to say. They lost to Australia, but they went and got a player from Australia. Australia. Or, I mean, a player who was traded alongside DeJounte Murray to the Hawks. Um, in then from the Hawks, got traded to the Suns for cash considerations. Jock Lando, who had 17 and 7. Um. He's from Australia, the big fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he played a little bit for Spurs uh, 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 last uh, season, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know how long this is gonna. I don't know how long this is gonna last. You know, Chris Paul is, you know, he he's getting up there in age, but I'm gonna go with it and I'm gonna take it. They're playing well. They beat a very good team. I think right now, if you look just in the early part of the season, I said the Warriors look the best right now that I've seen. But that's a good win for them. It's a confidence booster. It kind of lets everybody know that we're still here and there's no way around it. I think this Phoenix team, they can't, they, they, they come in here and they beat, I think they beat the Clippers, right? Is that who they beat? They, did they beat the Clippers? Um, um, I think they beat the Clippers the other night. Yeah. Phoenix Suns. So they've beat perhaps the two and best Dallas. teams. Expect- yeah. yeah. And Dallas and the West. So, and they only hey. lost by one bucket in overtime to the Blazers. So we could really so get, be sat here with a four and a record, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let, let's let's call like it. So, first four or five games, Phoenix is right up there. I mean, I'm still not a believer that they could win a championship, but um, it's cool to see. It's cool to see them winning games to start the year while everyone tries to figure things out. I'm a believer in in, in your theory of giving it 20, 25 games. Oh, without question. Judging teams. But, because, oh, without question. Because without we got to think like this Jay Crowder situation still needs to be sorted out. Whoever they bring in from him, they're going to have to integrate them. Is DeAndre Ayton still going to be happy there? Because he could be traded from January. So are they going to get to January and he's going to demand a trade? Like there's still question marks over other things that can happen throughout the course of the season. But, you know, for the, for the rest of the season, we're still going to be here. And uh, there's a lot more to break down. One thing that's intriguing is Russell Westbrook will not be playing in tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets for the Lakers with a hamstring. And I don't like this because the scenes, if the Lakers win tonight without Russell Westbrook, you better not go on the internet because they're just going to be talking hella rubbish. I know that he don't care necessarily about that, but it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to the Lakers because my personal opinion is this. Everyone gets on to Russell Westbrook and they think if they trade Russell Westbrook or get him off the team, that's going to solve all their problems. My thing is, no, it's not. Because the rest of the roster is still so flawed. But before we talk about that, do you want to go through the games of tonight and tell me who you think is going to take W? No, you tonight, let's reverse it. You tell me who you think is going to win. Like, okay. It doesn't matter who it, well, it doesn't matter who we think is going to win or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just nice to go. Let's talk about the game. Matchup. Cavs yeah, and Magic. Tipping off Cavs and Magic. Cavs at home. Donovan Mitchell's looking yeah, good. I'm just excited team. about the seven footers. 
I'm just oh, excited. Yeah. There could be like six or seven seven footers on the floor at one time. Oh, there could be. I mean, eight. It doesn't get better than that. Yep. I know that. I mean, I'm in basketball heaven. Your dream is coming true. Bo Bo is actually having a really nice start to the season. Bless you. With um, Bo Bo, it's always been a question of if he can get healthy. And this season, he looks like he has got healthy. And he's had a great start to the year. I'm really happy for the kid. But the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think, they've got too much star power to lose that one at home. Donovan Mitchell's been looking like a monster ever since he came into the squad. So... I'm is Garland coming back? When is Garland coming back? When is he coming back? Let me see what his projection is. Um, because let me have a look. Because once they all get healthy and get rolling, they are going to be uh, they're going to be flying. He remains out for the game against Wednesday. Uh, the game against Wednesday, the game on Wednesday against the Orlando Magic. Um, it's a laceration inside his eyelid. So his eye has been swollen oh, wow. shut. So it's like a little oh, cut wow. that he got on his eye. So hopefully it doesn't keep him out for too long. It doesn't say here um, how long he's going to be out for. They just say they're waiting for the swelling to go down. So that's just a matter of time and patience, I guess. But I trust the depth in that Cavs team. We talked about it all off season long. Then your Pistons are in action again. Second night of a back-to-back. They're home tonight hosting the Atlanta Hawks. DeJounte and Trey versus Caden Ivy. That's going to be a matchup. I think the Hawks got to I'm come a little concerned. Like I'm a little concerned with for Cade. Why? I'm a little concerned for him. How come? Well, here's why. You know, you have the you have the preseason, right? And you play and and you know, you kind of you kind of work out your kinks. You know, and when you're a young player, you know, you you, you you know, you just come out and play. And he didn't play well in the preseason. And in the first four games of the season, he hasn't played well. He's not shooting well. He's not playing well. And I'm a little concerned because that's about nine or ten games in a row. Mm-hmm. I'm a little concerned, okay? And I know it was the preseason, but when you're a young player, you're not like a proven player. You're not like a, a ten-year eight-time All-Star who's just getting through the preseason. You're a young player. I want to see something new in his game. I want to see what he has worked on over the, you know, like say, oh, he added X to his game or he added. Well, he added a lot of weight. He added a lot of muscle. He was in the weight room and he's come back a lot stronger this season. Yeah. uh, Well, it hasn't translated yet. Now, he's a really good player, but I'm a little concerned now. You know, okay, you had three or four games. You've had about nine or ten games. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm a little concerned. And I don't want this to get – I don't – you know, when you're playing on a team and you're seeing them lose – because they're losing by, you know, large margins right now. And when you are a young player, you begin to pick up, like, habits, right? You begin yeah. to learn how to score when you're down 25 or 30. You begin to learn how to play always from behind. So I want to see Cade. I want to determine this year with him, can he be the leader of the team? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they got to win the game, but I want to see them be more competitive with him as a leader of the team, especially, you know, what they're expecting from him. So I'm a little concerned. Hopefully he bounces back out of this, you know, Jay Nivey, he just shows you, he shows you glimpses of what he could be. I mean, he made a couple of plays in this game. You're going like, wow, mm-hmm. but he does that about every game. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he, you know, he doesn't play well for the entire game, but he'll give you a couple of glimpses or a quarter or a, or a half, and you'll say, this kid could be pretty good. You I know? mean, it's only like the, the fourth game of his career in the NBA, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you you're know what I'm saying? Like, right now, Cade hasn't had that, and, and it's certainly not in the first four games of the regular season. He hasn't shown you, like, if we were just watching the game, you wouldn't say, Cade, if you didn't rookie. know who Cade yeah, was. It, 
Yeah, yeah. You would just be like, oh, okay, he's another guy on the team. You know, but you'll see Jay Nivey, you'll be like, who's that kid? Kid. Mm-hmm. You'll see Duran. You'll see him get some dunks. You'll be like, who's that kid? Honestly, Duran in the starting lineup. I think it's time. I'm only four games in. I think it's time. I, I, yeah, you know, he's so young. He's so, you know, he's so raw right now. At least give him an opportunity to go around the league at least one time. I'm too like, hot. You know what I mean? I'm like, too hot. Yeah, you're, you're just throwing it. You want to throw the guy right in there. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, but but he's he is fun to watch. I mean, this guy, he competes. He gives you effort. And, and you know, he's got great hands. And um, But I, 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 I'm looking for K to give me a little bit more consistency in year two. Okay? Yeah. As a rookie, I, and I think this is fair. You know what I mean? Because we're expecting that from him. And so far, he hasn't shown that in the first four games. He has stretches last night where he looked quite good. I think adding all the muscle is, I don't know if that's what's affected his jumper or if he's tried to change his form a little bit, but it's looking different. It's looking different to how it was before. And hopefully you can get that figured out. We've got the Hornets taking on the New York Knicks. Both teams currently at two and one. I think the Knicks at home, Madison Square Garden. Let's start to figure out a few things of how to get their main three guys all playing together. The Hornets, it's it's kind of tough for the Hornets, but somehow, somehow they're winning a couple of games here and there. Uh, but they'll be without Terry Rozier, who's game time decision, Lamelo Ball, who's out for this one, whereas the Knicks stay healthy. We got the Sixers and the Raptors, a rematch of last year's playoff series in Toronto. That's going to be an interesting game. Because we're gonna see, we're gonna find out a few things. Sixers about this. big baby, Sixers big baby. Yeah, man. I ring like the Toronto. bell. Let's ring the bell. Well, they Sixers in Toronto. Big. They ain't in Philly. Oh, I like, yeah, for sure. I like the Raptors for that. And I mean, I might come back tomorrow, and it's gonna be a Sixers win. But I like what the Raptors are doing. I love what Freddie's doing up there with the rest of his squad. Um, but that's not just the only big clash that we got in the Eastern Conference. We've got the Nets and the Bucks. The Bucks, who keep their undefeated start to the season on the line, two and zero. I don't know why the schedule's giving them less games to start the year compared to everyone else, but the Nets are going into Milwaukee. The Nets have looked horrible so far this season. Like even their starting lineup has looked horrible when they're out there. Um, do you think they have any hope against Giannis tonight? Oh, they have hope. I mean, come on, you. Yeah. Anytime you have KD and Kyrie, I mean, they both put put up thirty seven last last night or the in night a loss. before, um, in a in a loss versus Memphis. Anytime you have those guys, you have a chance. Now, will they meet the expectations of what we have projected them or anticipating them to do? Now, that's the question. And so far, they have not played well especially on the defensive end. I mean, they've just, I mean, well, it's really hard for me to believe that they are this bad on the defensive end. And, you know, they've been together now for a couple of years and you're still trying to figure out what's their defensive identity. They just added a really good defensive player and Ben Simmons. KD and Kyrie are, you know, they're, they're, they're terrific athletes. So, I'm not saying they should be lockdown defenders, but this team, this team should be better. And if they continue to play this way, you know, I, I think, you know, you're going to see some rumblings there, uh, especially the way, you know, they 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 were swept in the playoffs last year, right? and that's really hard to do with, with with two elite talents like KD, who's a top five player in this league. And you have an elite mm. player in Kyrie. And I know he didn't play a lot of games last year and we can make, but th- those are the facts. Okay. Well, he's playing this year and they still look, you know, like, like they haven't put it all together. Ben Simmons doesn't look like he's got any rhythm right now mm-hmm. and they're just struggling. I mean, there's no way around it. KD and Kyrie are scoring, but the team is struggling to play and figure out how to play consistent basketball, especially on the defensive end. Well, let's see if Ben Simmons can not foul out because that'd be nice for him to complete the game without fouling out tonight. The Bulls host the Pacers <laughs> in a game. Which Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, 
Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me take that out of Ben Simmons' back. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you can go. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, uh, shout out to the UK Nets fans as well who said that they can hear the Ben Simmons slander and they're just waiting patiently. My brothers, I'm waiting patiently too. We're going to keep waiting all season long. I'm happy to be proven wrong. I'm just waiting for it to happen. But the Pacers, they shouldn't win against the Bulls. The Bulls should handle business. The Spurs, three and one against the Timberwolves once again. It's another one of those little regular season matchups. Let's see the who's tweaks Timber that the Timberwolves make. San Antonio. Timberwolves. Oh, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you never. The- what do you think of that? What do you think of that little statement by uh, Cat? See, I was going to ask you this, but then I knew you'd say, Mo, I like to stay on the court. I don't want to talk about this off the court. Conor yeah, Towns sat there in his purple woolly turtleneck jumper with his handbag on the table, calling out the young star on his team for eating Popeye's chicken. I was not a fan of that. If you're going to do that, do that in private. Why are you doing that in the media? You know what I'm saying? And also, Kat, what do you really know about winning? If I had to pick between Carl Anthony Towns and his healthy diet or Anthony Edwards eating Popeyes every day, I'm picking Ant-Man every day and I'm ordering some extra Popeyes for myself. That's what I think about that. What do you think about that? I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was very, very interesting. And we'll see, you know, if he, if it wins, people are going to say it worked. If they lose, however, you and I will have a lot of things to talk about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's... It, I can't ever forget that I was young once. OK, that's one thing I'm, 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 I'm not going to forget that. And young people are going to make mistakes. As they should. That's why you're young. <laughs> OK, yep. you make mistakes, you grow from your mistakes. And now if he's 30, 30 years old or 28 years old eating that way, then you're like, OK, what's going on here? He's 21. He's having fun. Mm-hmm. That's that's. That's, you know, that, how does the statement go? That's why you you waste the you waste the he's, youth on he, the young. Or you, yeah, he said. Is that how it goes? He, he said. He said. Auntie Edwards's diet doesn't make him happy. <laughs> that's I okay. mean, that's okay. The kid grew up in the South. Okay, and anyone who's been in the South know that you know look, it takes some time. You know, they. It, it, that's how it is. I, there's no, nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. I can't sit here now and tell you because now at 55, I have to eat my salmon and all of that stuff, Mo. Yeah, when I was 20, 21. Me. Yeah, when I was 20, 21. Okay, let me tell you something. You know what, Mo? I had fun and I had fun with my food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Mo. I had fun. I had fun with my food. OK, yep. and you know what? And, 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 and Mo, you know, they tell us don't play with your food at the table. Well, Mo, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> hey, hey, Mo. Uh, so so for me to sit here now and tell you how disciplined I am and I do my yoga and I meditate. OK, all right, Mo, but it's taken me a while to get here. Mm-hmm. And I'm OK with Ant-Man. I'm OK with that because yep. you know what, Mo? When he does figure this thing out, well, it's, it's like be a problem. It's like Jason Tatum only started eating properly this summer, so everything yeah, Tatum did in his career up until this summer, he's been on just a normal young person diet as well. So okay. I don't and, know. And, and listen, uh, yeah. and, and, I also listen, thought it was weird listen. that Carlisle Towns put that in the media. I think that's, that's a conversation uh, let, let, let that me, can happen. Let me tell you something. That's a conversation let that can happen in you private. Something. You know, and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. You know, a young Derrick Rose who wins his MVP in his third season, okay? Wasn't just an all-star, Mo. He was MVP of the league. Mm -hmm. The guy had a diet of just candy. (laughs) (laughs) No, Mo. Yeah. Skills. He had a diet, Mo. He went through this league. I think he played about 79 or 80 games that year. On strictly candy. That's crazy. Okay. 
Mo. All right. There are other players who I've played with who've been MVPs in this league, and they don't even eat. Just, just how it is. Everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Trust me, my generation wasn't eat. We didn't have private planes and chefs and Mo. We didn't have any of that. Okay. And let me tell you, there were many a guys that they had a little piece of chicken, a hamburger, a hot dog, potato chips, french fries, right before tip-off, okay? Man, I should have so played in the nice. <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 Mo, okay? Okay? Yep. There, the, 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 and you ask anyone, we should have a former ball boy that was in the locker rooms in the 80s and the 90s. And ask them how many hot dog runs and hamburger runs and cheese whiz, tortito, whatever, tostitos or whatever those things are mm-hmm. that were in the locker room right before tip off. The guys crazy. go out there and play and, and score 25, 30, 40 points. That's just what it is. So, you know what? You do what you have to do. And, Mo, I've seen some awful diets, okay? I saw a man win an MVP and didn't get one vegetable. That should be in the Hall of Fame It's in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Just ate candy for the whole season. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. But Mo, yeah. Mo, we, he would go out to dinner. We would go out to dinner. And I was like, there has to be something on the menu. We're going to like great restaurants. We're staying in five star hotels. BJ there takes his food seriously. For you guys who don't oh, know, no, no, I, BJ's I, a connoisseur. I'm serious. I'm a connoisseur no, I'm in the restaurant. On my, food. On my on my food, right? But he, even there, in the restaurant, he just have candy. Just sit there and eat candy. He would go to dinner with you. He'd be like, I'd be like, you, you plan tomorrow, Mo. This 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 is this is. Remember that dunk he had in Phoenix? Yes. On on Dragic. On, on Dragic okay. Mm-hmm. The night before, the night before, they played, I think it's either the Lakers or the Clippers. They were in. You can look look at look this up. I, I was like, like, you gotta eat something because you're playing in a back-to-back. And we went out the night before they played the Clippers. I was like, you gotta eat something. You're playing in a back-to-back. You know, I'm trying to get him to, you know, like learn how to, you know, just. Yeah. Man, I'm good, V. Don't worry about it. Well, let's go to dinner. I was like, he's got to eat something. Like, I don't care. Just eat one noodle of pasta. <laughs> eat just <laughs> like Mo. One just stem of like, broccoli. Just, just one. Uh, just, just, still, yeah. yeah. A, a, a piece of potato. Rice. Just eat something. And we just sat there and we laugh because we're all, we got lobster, we got steak, we got mo. we're just ordering. Like, we got the chef now. Everyone's like, man, are you going to eat? You playing tomorrow night? You know, he was like, no, I'm good. Just sitting there eating Skittles. Crazy. Okay. He goes out that night, has, and then goes out the next night, has like 30. So Not just like, 30, man, like the most explosive 30 points. No, no, seen. I mean, it, 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 he's got like, he's, he's running around Mo. Now he's doing this on like literally Skittles. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, the former player in me is like, this guy's got to eat something. And he plays, he plays well. I go, well, he's just going to like, to the, the next night, there's no way he can. Mo, he's better than next night. It just went on for the whole season. For the whole season. That's wild. Mo. So when I hear people talking about diets or whatever, hey, I, I, I you do what you got to do to play. Yeah. And I know I'm a I I knew what I had to do and I had to eat right and sleep right and do all that. That was that's what worked for me. But Mo, I've seen the exact opposite. Yeah. You know, and I hope another guy, and I'll, then I'll let you Rod Strickland. When you if we should have Rod on, mm-hmm. Rod had one of the worst diets I've ever I've ever seen, and the guy is just like even to this day he's still ripped. 
And it makes me upset. I'm like, it makes me upset. You see me, Mo, you see me, Mo, like, you know, I'm still trying to work out, like, you know, a little bit, you know, not Mm -hmm. like I used to, but I, you know, Mo, the guy would eat like chili cheese hot dogs before, right before the tip off. It was known throughout the league. Mo, and if you ever see Rod him with some devil's breath and and, and, and Rod (laughs) is just like chiseled. Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, so it's just everyone's different. Like, I mean, some people can do it. I mean, BJ caught me eating a donut in the airport one time. We had a flight to catch at, like, 5 a.m., and I was eating a donut. The way he looked at me with such disgust, just oh, just yeah, the yeah, disappointment yeah. in his face. I, I said, uh, you can't do that. Well, well you, you, you can't do it. But there, there are a lot of... There I, are, I, I need it, the sugar to stay awake. You know what I mean? There's, there's no sleep no, life. It's you. killing me slowly. But let's keep it moving around, leaks. I'm just not a fan of Carl Anthony Towns calling out his 21 year old teammate about his diet in the media. I just think that's a conversation you can have privately in the locker room and then keep moving forward. Um, but speaking of young players, we got the Rockets facing the Jazz. The Jazz can improve to four and one tonight with a win at home, which I expect them to do so, which is pretty crazy oh, for a start yeah, to the they, season. They had a little scuffle over there in Houston, you know, let's get in a little play mm-hmm. uh, on know, the bench. The the Jabari players, and, you know? Eric Gordon's reaction. Like Eric Gordon just being, I'm too old for this. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. not getting you know involved. What? Eric Gordon, I feel you. You know what? I feel you, man. You, you can just get it to a point. You know, as, as a vet, and you're a year 12, 13, 14, 15. You're like, I, I've seen enough fights now. Okay, they're going to fight. The coaches get into it. Players make up. That's, that's just part of the season. But I did, I did like the fact that there's some fire. That shows me that these guys, they you know, win. they're not just they're going not through just the motions. Tanking. And I, I respect that. Now, you would hope, you would hope that, you know, that, you know, this doesn't, this isn't a, a, a reoccurring occurrence, you know, that just happens all the time. But I like the fact that when young players, when they, the game means that much to them. So, you know, I, I thought that was positive. And, um, you know, I like that little fire from Jabari Smith. I, I was like, okay, all right, I respect that. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the Russell Westbrook less Lakers will get a win tonight in Denver? I I I I just you know I I don't know. I I don't I don't think it has anything to do with Russ. You know we love narratives and we love to you know you, you can see you know and and I think this needs to be said. You can see how the media can influence the uninformed. Yes. Okay. And I treat the listeners, our listeners, the NBA fans with the ultimate respect because I know they are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. The media may be saying one thing, but I, maybe I just want to believe this, but I know that the fans who we talk to and who listen to us, mm-hmm. they see the same thing we're seeing. And if your third best player is that important, why aren't we making him the best player? If he has that type of effect on the game with only eight or nine shots, okay, when when, when you – Eight and nine shots for me was a big night yeah. as a role player. <laughs> okay, Mo, I got that nine play. shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, Bro, Mo, and I was a role player. I was a roles role player. Okay, star players they get 20, 25 shots. They can miss their first seven, eight shots, and then they make their next seven, eight shots, and you, and then people start saying that's why they're a great player. <laughs> the Steph Curry is on fire. You know, no more. That's yeah. what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to keep shooting. You can't let this you can't is new. You got to keep shooting. This is new for Russell. Russell has never ever in his career been in this position as a role player, and, and they're asking him to do something he doesn't do naturally. He's not an efficient player. Well, Lonnie Walker's taking more shots per game than him. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Mo, this this whole narrative makes no sense. So out of respect, because I know the people who are watching the game can see the same thing I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. This isn't me defending him. 
this isn't me not saying it's a good fit or a bad fit. Out of respect to the listeners and to the people who are watching the game, Coach Ham sees it. Everyone who plays the game sees it. He is not the problem. Yep. Okay. He's not the problem, right? He 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 didn't sign there in free agency. Mm-hmm. He was traded there. And they signed off on a trade. Le GM. Okay. They okay, Mo. Let, let, let me tell you something. When you when you trade for someone, okay, it's your job to figure out how to make it work. Mm-hmm. And he ain't changed. It's not like he's forgotten how to shoot threes mm-hmm. all of a sudden. The Lakers had a game, a whole series against the Houston Rockets in the playoffs, and they were on the way to the championship where they literally didn't guard Russell Westbrook at all whenever he had the ball outside the three-point line. They let him shoot as much as he wanted, I, and then they I'm, traded for him. I'm, but speaking of shooting threes, LeBron James is shooting 26% from three. Anthony Davis is shooting 15% from three. Lonnie Walker is shooting 8% from three. Patrick Beverly is shooting was 21% from three. The whole roster stinks from behind the arc, and yet they continue to chuck up threes. No, it, it's it, it Mo, listen, listen. It's not just and on I'm Russell. Not, I, listen, I'm not into the blame game. Okay, because I've been around too long to blame. I, okay, I am. I blame the front the, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can blame the front office, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something when you do become a GM. Mm-hmm. If Mo on my clock makes a deal without consulting his best players, I'm going to fire you before the team does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Now we can blame Mo because we we don't know better, but in the NBA, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pull the curtain back. No executive, no team makes a deal without consulting their best player or players. Mm-hmm. AD and LeBron signed off on the Russell Westbrook trade. This is, how it, this is how it works. If your best players come to you and say, hey, we want player X, that's your best players holding themselves accountable and saying, we know what we need to win. Now, if you don't do the deal and you don't win, guess what your best player is going to do? Oh, well, they didn't give us what we needed. Mm-hmm. So for me to sit here and blame their executives, then that must mean I don't, I, I haven't worked in the NBA. Well, I've worked in the NBA and I played in the NBA. And let me tell you something. When you have a star player, everything goes through that star player or players. Mm -hmm. every single move. Why? Because when you have a star player like a Giannis or those players, you're trying to maximize that player's prime years. LeBron James doesn't have any more time to be like next year. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that LeBron James is going to not know who he's playing with next year at this stage of his career? And you want me to sit here and say that? Well, no. And and out of respect to our listeners, I'm not blaming anyone, but let me tell you something. It was just a miscalculation. You hear me say it, Mo, and I try to say it in a nice way. Roster construction is a talent, okay? If you don't believe me, just keep watching the NBA and we'll keep pointing it out to you till you'll finally say, you know what? Constructing a roster is a talent. And when they made this decision to get Russell, when they did, not just one person, and I know... That person, you know, traditionally that's been the role and that's what's, you know, they've carried that responsibility. But no, that's not how this works here. Okay. And the reason it doesn't work this way is because of the following. 
if you're going to win a championship, all four of these groups have to be in, in unison in sync. The ownership, the executives, the coaches, and the players. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a partnership. If those, if one of those four is not in sync, you, you won't win. Okay? And let's look at the Warriors. Their ownership, their executives, Bob Myers, their coaches, Steve Kerr, and their player, Steph Curry. You just saw them have a very critical situation that just handled, just happened there recently mm -hmm. with, with a couple of players. Do you mean to tell me you don't think those four people didn't sit down and talk and figure out how they're going to get through this? Yep. Do you really think they all just independently walked up to the microphone with their independent statements without communicating and understanding what needs to be done? Nope. That's how this works. Mm -hmm. So. I hear it. You know, that's, a, that, that's what it is. It is what it is. I hear it. Well, let's see what happens tonight. Hopefully they lose and the Lakers go 0-4. Um, and, uh, and we can to have your some delight. On the To podcast. your delight. Yeah, of course. To your delight. Of course. Of course. <laughs> With the, yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of going on board, the Blazers are 4-0. They host the Miami Heat, who are 1-3. and Disappointing start to the season for them. I think the Blazers can win. Go become the first team in the NBA, the uh, only team in the NBA to go 5-0. and It's Dame time, I, I, like we said I yesterday. Think, I, think, I, 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 I think so. I, I think they can. I think they're feeling good. That's a long trip for the, the Miami Heat. You know, that's about as far as you can travel in the NBA from... Miami to Portland. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say that the, I'm going to say Portland by 20. How about that? Wow. Well, only time will tell. And we're going to be back tomorrow morning, breaking it all down for you. So make sure you subscribe to the show, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you stay locked in with us because we'll be back with another one tomorrow morning. BJ, appreciate the insight as always. I'm off to uh, start my day with a packet of skills and try and dunk on someone like D. Rose. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's a deep secret in the NBA. Well, we're going to see if it it's works for me. <laughs> Mo, always remember this. It's a dysfunctional league. Okay. It's a dysfunctional league ran by dysfunctional people played by dysfunctional players. Well, I'm going to be right and if, you, and if you put, put Skittles, if you put Skittles in there, You'll fit right in. Oh, man. I'm going to be right at home as <laughs> the GM. We're going to catch you guys tomorrow. Make sure you stay locked in and get buckets.